fixing issues. That's what we're gonna try and do today. Um, last video I was showing you how I was having an issue with my map sensor. So I finally got a new one in and I'm gonna try it out and hopefully that was my problem all along. And uh, I'll show you what the difference is with the cheap one I bought and the legit AC Delco one I bought. So this is the cheap one that I bought. There's no sticker or anything on it. And this is the AC Delco one I bought. Um, but you can probably won't be able to focus on the numbers on it. But it's uh, it's an AC Delco and it's the 12592525 uh, number. And like when I bought this one off Amazon, this was advertised as the same replacement number and stuff as this guy, but there's no markings whatsoever. There's no sticker. This one's even got like little numbers, you know, three, one. This has no markings, no numbers whatsoever. And even on the back side, there's, there's numbers down, down in there. And this one's got nothing. So in a lot of cases, you know, you could have a sensor like this that both of them are made in the same factory and AC Delco buys that sensor, puts their name on it and sells it to you for twice as much. But this guy, like they don't have any numbers, any identification numbers whatsoever on this guy. And uh, hopefully it's just poor quality that's, that's giving me my problems and maybe this will be a quality part that will fix it. But I'm gonna get that switched out. The other thing I noticed is I checked my oil because uh, my oil level, not oil level, like my oil level was higher than when I started uh, trying to fire this thing up. Um, and it smelled of gas. Because everything was so rich, I think I was washing up my cylinders basically and I had all this fuel sitting in my cylinders eventually leach, leach by the piston and end up in the oil. Like when I drain the oil, you'll see very watery and reeks, reeks of fuel. So I had a lot of gas in there. So I drained that out and put new, put new oil in it. So hopefully the, the fuel in the oil is just from this thing being absolutely uh, drowned in fuel uh, with the poor readings. And uh, I'm hoping I don't have an injector stuck open. Uh, even when I shut it off, my fuel pressure bleeds right down to nothing. And it doesn't take very long to bleed down. And the only thing I can think is, there's a, well, not the only thing, but there is a chance that one of these injectors might have a, a piece of dirt keeping it open and it's bleeding out, it's bleeding that pressure in one of the cylinders. But I'm not totally sure yet. I've never had my fuel pressure drop like that as fast as it has. Uh, with the old pump and the old setup, it would slowly die down, but it would take days and days to drop to 10 pounds, but it would never get down to zero. This will get down to zero in, I would say, 15 minutes, if not less. Like the pressure start, you can watch the pressure, pressure drop as soon as I shut it off. Uh, so I hope, hopefully it's not an injector stuck open, but I don't know where else it would be bleeding. Um, the pump, it shouldn't bleed back through the pump, but it might. And uh, I won't know until, if, if this thing runs, grit, runs good from having the new map sensor in it, and it's not super, super rich anymore, and I still end up with a lot of fuel in my oil, then I have to start looking at the injectors, whether there's dirt in it or just poor quality. And uh, if that's my problem, uh, I'm gonna have to deal with that. I can take them out and send them out and have them have them tested and uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so we'll tackle the first problem which is putting in the map sensor. Okay I'm back in the car with the laptop hooked up and the sensor's in we're gonna fire it up I've already changed the parameters in here to tell it's a, it's a turbo and that it's got the two and a half bar map sensor again and uh, we'll fire it up and see if it fixed the problem.
It's running way better though. Got a little too aggressive with it. Interesting. Okay, it's been a couple days. It seems like as soon as I fix one problem, I've got another. It is running better. That sensor is reading correctly now. Um, somebody had messaged me in the comment section that it should be reading, the map sensor should be reading around 100 kPa uh, when it's not running. And that's what it's doing. And then when you fire it up, it's giving proper readings. If I let the car sit for a couple hours or whatever, it'll fire right up. As soon as I rev it or shut it off, I can't restart it. I don't know why. It'll just crank over and spit and sputter, but it won't fire up. I'm not quite sure what's happening. Um, I had to keep shutting it off because it was getting too hot. The um, I had an airlock in the in the engine, and every time when my temperature would get up to around 230 or so, I shut it off. The learn table you'll see down here in the corner it says no learn you can see that the computer will will make adjustments and and teach itself how to run correctly if you let it but it has to get up to 160 uh, degrees before that kicks on so the problem I was having was as soon as it starts to learn, I need to shut it off after a couple minutes because my temperature was spiking. So I was able to get the airlock out and I'll show you what I did to do that. I got this hose coming down off the rad that just pipes into the, the crossover. I just took that crossover, I just took the hose off the crossover because that's the, the highest point. I don't have a bleed valve. Some of, the, some of the water pump stuff have a bleed valve. This one doesn't. And I just pulled that hose off and right away my coolant level dropped as the engine filled up with coolant. And I just kept adding coolant until it started coming out that crossover and then plugged the hose back on. And, and now my upper rad hose is hot because I just had the engine running again. I, I now have coolant circling through and I'm not overheating. So, you know, I'm sitting around 194 right now and it's not learning because obviously it's off. But everything seems to be running correctly. I just don't know why it doesn't want to stay running because it sat here and idled for the last 10 minutes. And as soon as I gave it a shot of throttle, died. And now it won't restart. So, so this is all a learning process for me. And as I work out one bug, I seem to have uh, another one to go. So I'm going to have to email Holly again and find out what could be causing this problem. And as I sort out my problems, I will let you guys know what, uh, what I find. But one of the problems I'm facing right now is this thing, because it's running in my garage here, even with the door open, the, the exhaust fumes are so intense that I can't even stand in here while this thing's running. So I'm going to, while I'm waiting for a response back from Holly, I'm going to make an exhaust so I can at least get the exhaust out of the garage while it's running because this thing's still on stands. It's not going anywhere for a little while yet. And I need to make my exhaust up anyway. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on building an exhaust for this thing so that the exhaust can be exiting outside and not directly under the car here. And uh, maybe I can work on this thing a little bit better if I'm not dying while it's running. So that's it for today. I gotta wait for some answers and get some other stuff fabricated here. But uh, we'll get this thing sorted out one way or another.